Good morning, people. I hope everybody had a good Christmas. Um, a bit quiet at my end, but anyway, doesn't matter. Um, I just thought I'd come on. Jack Dempsey, the uh, mayor of Bundaberg, has come out against the cash debit card. And as there's an article today in the Brisbane Times, um, when I can, I'll upload the text to it because it's paywalled. But there's a um, similar article in Sydney News Today as well, which I've posted in the comments. And um, Jack's come out against the cashless debit card, and I'll read a couple of bits from the Sydney News today because I can bring that straight up on my computer. But I'll put the text of the other bit in. All right. Um, he's been watching the trial for th nearly three years now, and um, he stands with uh, Labor Party Mayor for Fraser Coast Council, um, George Seymour. Okay, that. Um, the federal data doesn't support the card, you know. Critics say it's not a way. Um, it's not a way to stigma. Um, hang on. Critics say it's no not a way to stigmatise users and treat complex social problems such as addiction and mental health. Proponents argue that it puts food on families' dinner table. Well, considering that a lot of people are having to pay rent by buying food, all right. That distorts that idea because you know India doesn't allow certain rent, so people are left paying for groceries in lieu of paying their rent. All right, um, Keith Pitt's still trying to claim strong community support across his voters. <laughs> yeah, um, Merry Christmas to you, Ron. Um, so basically, um, you know, Jack has tried to convince future landlords that some people, including women fleeing domestic violence, have money in the bank already spoiled for renters in the hot housing market with this card. He couldn't convince landlords to accept people on the cashless debit card into their homes. You know, this, it is a barrier to getting housing. We know that. Once a person's been turfed out, that's it. They don't get another chance, especially um, with the housing crisis that we've got. Hinkler, Bundaberg, all right, and Harvey Bay, but more so Bundaberg. The housing crisis is so bad up there. Um, the homelessness is off. The homeless, I mean, how could Keith Pitt be proud of the fact that his region has taken out the most disadvantaged region in the country since the cashless debit cards come in? We have the highest homeless rate and the highest youth suicide rate. That is not something to be um, proud of. And saying, and saying that, you know, he has strong community support for this. No, he doesn't. All right? No, he doesn't. You know, so um, the, the Sydney article doesn't, it's, I don't know, its wording is really weird. Um, as I said, I'll get the text up as soon as I can from the Brisbane article because that one makes a lot more sense. But basically... Um, Jack says, you know, he, he feels it should be voluntary unless there's compelling individual reasons. Okay, so he's playing his cards close to the chest there. Um, and, um, you know, the coalition is flagged, has flagged a nationwide expansion without clear evidence of community interest and informed con community consent. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, it's ridiculous, you know. Um, we know that Labor will stop it. Um, they definitely won't expand it. That's for sure. They will stop it. And, um, <coughs> excuse me. Jack's words are we really need to start taking care of each other, not putting people in a box. You know, um, yeah, uh, this article that is free to read actually misses out quite a bit of what he said in the um, Brisbane Times, but. Yeah, it's just disgusting. Um, I'll get the other text up for you guys, do you know what I mean? As soon as I can. Now, I noticed in the comments, I've just posted this from from Jack Dempsey's page. Christmas time is forgiving and to think about people who are less fortunate. My thoughts this year are with those who are on the federal government's cashless debit card. In a tight property market, how do they get a rental property if they need one? They don't. Simple as that. Okay, it's not fair that struggling people are stigmatised and treated as second-class citizens. 
As someone who grew up in social housing, I have a great affinity with how people are perceived and treated. Many people on welfare through no fault of their own. For example, I know single mums who are victims of domestic violence. The Hinkler electorate is the only majority non-Indigenous community in Australia where cash is, uh, card has been imposed and it's not something to be proud of. Why it is enforced in Bundaberg and Childers but not Moore Park Beach and Jinjin, Harvey Bay but not Maryborough, that doesn't make sense. That's because there's different electoral, federal electoral boundaries. Uh, and Moore Park and Jinjin are in the Gladstone electorate of Flynn and Maryborough is in the electorate of White Bay. Um, and yeah, there's been a fight to keep the cashless debit card out of the White Bay, believe me. Um, so academic studies haven't proved that it works. But the Hinkler trial continues along with the social division and millions of dollars in costs. My personal view is to end the trial. If it's not good enough for the whole of Australia, get rid of it. Why are welfare recipients in Bundaberg and Harvey Bay treated differently to those in Elizabeth SA, an equally disadvantaged community in the home state of Minister Anne Ruston? Well, Elizabeth South Australia has um, the basics card for under 22s. Uh, I'm sure that if the cashless debit card was to be rolled out nationally, then the basis card regions outside the Northern Territory would be rolled over onto the cashless debit card. So Elizabeth, South Australia is a target for sure. Um, because if they could expand forced income management above the age 22s, you know, um, in that region, they would get... Oh, Elizabeth has the highest unemployment in South Australia due to... Oh, I don't know. The LMP telling GMH Holdens to bugger off, you know, that sort of did something really bad to Elizabeth because it shut down all manufacturing industry and all of the other factories that were related to that. 200,000 jobs went, you know what I mean? People don't forget what they've done, what the LMP government have done. You know, so there's a lot of people there that would be targeted and mostly people that have worked all their lives at Holdens that have never been able to get jobs again. Because, you know, 30 years in the factory and there's no factories to go to. Yeah, it's disgusting. You know, Jack says make it voluntary or have it imposed by court orders in exceptional cases, but don't punish people who need support. Not everyone on welfare is a drug abuser, alcoholic or gambler. We should be an inclusive society, not one that discriminates against the less fortunate. As we head towards the federal election, all candidates for Hinkler should be clear what their policies are on this issue. All right, yeah, so, but I noticed somebody came in, um, and I'm, I'm not going to put up with pro card, but they, they've got no cash, just debit card as their banner, but then they, they, they put out the only time anyone should be forced onto these shameful things is they constantly um, don't do their job search or if they're not back jobs for no good reason, anything else, and it should be voluntary. I'm sorry, but we don't support cash, just debit card, in that respect, you know what I mean? Uh, I've just posted comment back to this guy, Andrew. No, that's no reason to strip anyone's human rights and legal protections in law, autonomy and dignity away from them. We don't do pro card supporters here. Commodifying Australians for profits for a private company and segregating them from community for not being able to get a job or not being able to get on the DSP or being over 55, the largest unemployment group, or being on an age pension, disability or carers, kids coming out of high school, Job agencies are another raw, again, profits for others, not people needing real help to get a job. Australians are not for sale. Simple as that. It's Boxing Day. We're not fucking commodities for sale. Excuse my French. It really annoys me when people have that attitude, do you know what I mean? Um, because they're missing the huge point here. Andrew Brady is going on about, oh, those that don't do their job search. Um, don't they realise that when somebody doesn't do their job search, they get cut off their payments? So they're not receiving payments if they don't do their mutual obligations, right? Okay, Malcolm Welch says the people should get to vote on every decision if they want to. The thing with that is, in a situation like this, the LNP government would love nothing to put it out. They would love to put this out to the national vote because they would rely on the ignorance of the average Australian to not know that this is a massive human rights breach, right? Legal protections under law, consumer rights under law, right? 
autonomy, freedoms of choice, privacy. The, you can't do something like this without informed putting out the information. And the government's not going to put out the information. They're not going to tell the truth of what this strips you to, how it contracts you to a private company without your consent. You're effectively sold for the princely sum of $13,000 setup cost. Right? So putting it to the public like it is right now, with the Murdoch media and the welfare bashing, all you'll get is, oh, it'll stop them from... They're drug addicts, they're alcoholics. It'll just... The, the government would just reinforce the stigma, which is bullshit, and, and I'm over it. Do you know what I mean? Um, because it's not fair on Australians. You know, a lot of people work on this card as well. I met one on um, Christmas Eve, you know. So the job agencies are raking in like $40 billion a year or some stupid amount of money, or they've gone through... I, I, I don't know how much money's been wasted on job agencies that don't get people jobs, but they make people jump through hoops. Now, you can lose your payment for being late um, or not being ha or not having enough money to have transport to get to a job agency meeting or not get to one of their stupid courses, right? What people have got to understand is if you're vying, for, if you're supporting a system that cuts people off, you're supporting... Basically, you could be killing another Australian. That's what you're supporting. When you support um, a program to be enforced based on if somebody doesn't jump through the hoop, crack the whip, all right? It's not as if there's enough jobs out there anyway, okay? 800-something thousand people that are what they call actively job seekers under their stats when at most... 200,000 jobs that are not full-time might be in play at the time, but in reality, there's only 80,000 jobs on the table that month for 800,000 people, all right? So, um, Andrew Brady, you've got it all wrong, you know, and I noticed somebody actually liked his comment, and I disagree with it, I really do, because... Um, this constant, you must work for the doll. You must jump through hoops to get your legal entitlement under the Social Security Act is wrong. And, and unfortunately, Australia hasn't repealed its convict laws. So unlike the UK, where there's been instances where people have taken the DWP to court under the Slavery Act and won, right, in a case of a man that... Um, was stood down from a £65,000 a year job in IT and only to be put back into that job under what they call workfare, their version of work for the doll, for £73 a week. Right? He took them to court and he won. And he won. And he, he won like £130,000 um, and basically to allow companies to be able to replace waged award waged workers with work for the dole. Slavery, that's exactly it, you know, because then all of a sudden the boss doesn't have to pay super, he doesn't have to pay work cover, right? Nobody's covered. And the person's working for their social security payment, not wages. That's wrong. You know, um, I really don't appreciate comments like, you know, because Andrew obviously supports the cash certificate. You know, you either do or you don't. In this case, I don't think it... Now, voluntary could be okay if it was a government-run program and everybody had informed consent and they weren't losing their rights. But under the privatised scheme, they're losing their rights. Okay? They're losing their legal rights in law and their protections under the Consumer Act and statutory rights. Okay? Um, I'm sorry, can't agree with you, Andrew Brady, at all, not in any way, not in any way, you know, this, um, job agencies, we need a CES, we don't need the job agencies, I think Serena Rosso and Max Employment, which is an American company, have made far too much money out of imposing misery and stress on so many people, um, and they've left so many people destitute, homeless, and hungry 
I can't back that at all. Not at all. You know what I mean? If people don't follow their obligations, they get cut off. Simple as that. If you're advocating for that sort of thing, then you're advocating for basically killing your own mates. You know? You know? So let's see, federal government is taking credit for job increases after the no jab, no job was instigated. So we now have a lot of unemployed Australians. I, like many others, did not vote for this corruption. You could have forgiven, just say you were angry. Oh, <coughs> no job, no jab doesn't even come into this. That's a personal choice. I'm not going to get into it here. All right? Sorry. That's a completely different field. Of, and I'm sorry, but. That situation is not breaching the Human Rights Act. It's not breaching people's legal rights and all. People are choosing not to get vaxxed. All right, that's their prerogative to make that choice. I can't say much about that. All right, they have the freedom and the luxury of having informed consent to be able to decide that choice if they want to do it. If it's costing them their jobs, that's the consequence of the choice. Nothing more I can say in that respect. Cashless debit card holders did not have the luxury of informed consent or choice. Right? They've been contracted to a private company without their consent. They've had their human rights, Article 9 under the UNCHR, removed. Right? Um, they've had um, their statutory and consumer protections under Australian law removed. And they've had their protections of payments under... Australian Commonwealth Acts, Social Security, 1991, 1999, removed without their consent. They didn't have the luxury of having a choice. All right, I'm sorry, but we don't do the... I can't stand with this. I'm dealing with people who've lost their, their real human rights. Um, and in this situation, I get frustrated because I'm seeing people squealing about not being able to go into a coffee shop which is not a human rights breach right now the government's been very careful to not breach people's human rights in regards to their mandates you can still go to the supermarket and buy your food you can still go and buy your medicines okay however all right you can you know going to the movies the pub or a coffee shop is a privilege in society not a human rights not a yeah and it's it's not a human rights issue and that's why you know yeah this is very different all right Indu um, has a, a, a letter of no action to protect them from breaking uh, article I think it's B B12 of the Consumer Act okay there's a law that's being broken right now for everybody who's forced onto the cash debit card. That law is being broken, but Indu have got protection. All right. The Human Rights Commission or the Human Rights Law Centre expressed an opinion on the cash. Yes, they have. Jane Hearn, they have plenty. Um, and you can also find on the SN7 resources page, we've posted links to them. They've written submissions and they're very clear in the fact that the Cashless debit card does not, um, uh, it, it infringes upon Article 9, which is your right to Social Security, the rights of the child, and the rights of um, financial economic inclusion and cultural rights. Okay. Um, you can also look up the Law Society's submission as well. So you'll be able to find the Human Rights Commission submission and the Law Society. And even though the LNP keeps saying, oh, it's um, it's okay, it's not okay. And our Human Rights Commission have said it's no, no good as well. Not compatible with human rights. Okay, uh, so that's all I'm going to say on that. All right, guys, well, hopefully you'll have a nice Boxing Day or whatever. I'm actually going to try and get out of the house and go and do something. And uh, I will uh, talk to you guys later. Take care of yourselves. Bye.